Fallout is definitely one of our favorite franchises, and today we wanted to go back to an old style of videos and take a look at five things that Fallout 3 did very well, five things it did right. Honestly, five things we like, and we are the arbiters of what is good and bad, so therefore, if we say it did it right, I, th I think the internet has to accept it, It right? has to, yeah. yeah Unless absolutely. it's wrong. Let us know what you think in the comments down below as we move into the list, and please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and there will be more Fallout content in the future. It's always fun, so let's hop right into it. Number five. So one of the first things that I really love about Fallout 3 is that it felt like your moral decisions mattered. Now this is something that the old Fallout games like 1 and 2 did prior to this, but I actually think Fallout 3 does one of the best jobs along with New Vegas in the modern era of Fallout actually making you feel like the choices you're making and the decisions you're making are kind of affecting the world and who you are as a person in the world. Yeah, this in New Vegas, I think the karma system really helped with this. When you make a decision, whether it's for a person, or for yourself, or whatever, I thought Fallout 3 did a really good job that that decision actually affects the storyline. Not just the main storyline, but also side content and character relationships and stuff like that. You really got the feeling that I'm either a great person, and I'm here to save the world and white knight this entire city, basically. Yeah, your e-girlfriend is going to exactly. be replying to you real quick after you save oh, yeah. Megaton. <laughs> or, you, or you also got the feeling that you were just a morally awful person. Yeah. And this game, this game did a really good job with that. You know, one of the main things is you can actually blow up the town of Megaton mm -hmm. if you choose to like go more of this morally inept route. Yeah. So stuff like that I thought was really interesting with your moral decisions in the game. Well, and something too I don't see a lot of people mention with that is that you can actually encounter random events after destroying Megaton where yeah. you're attacked by survivors mm -hmm. who uh, are basically ghouls who lived through the nuke. Yeah. Right. And so they come after you, kind of <laughs> like how, you know, other factions will come after you, like Talon Company and stuff. I thought that was really interesting. And, you know, there is direct parts where your decisions affect the world. If you nuke Megaton, that's off the map. And then you have access to the Ten Penny Tower housing if you play your cards right. Mm -hmm. And if you don't nuke Megaton, you don't have access to the Ten Penny Tower housing without exploiting the game. There is kind of a way to get in there, but you're not really supposed to. That's like the above board consequences to your actions, you know, is it does actually affect the world and you're walking by that town and now it's a crater. Or you're walking by that town and you're a good guy and you can actually have a house there. You also see it with things like, do I put the ghouls in Tenpenny Tower or not? Oh, well, what am I going to do about Arafu and about this kid that went missing and the mm -hmm. little cannibal cult with the vampires? James, your father in the game played by Liam Neeson, he actually will comment on some of those actions if you've taken them before you go meet him at the water purification. Well, and it also makes sense because some of the games, like for example, Fallout 4, don't really make a lot of sense in the in the fact that you do something and some other group of people that would maybe care about that at all, they just don't make any comments at all. It's just like, oh yeah, you're working with the railroad here and we're the Brotherhood. Yeah, but we're fine. Yeah, it's like they where just don't like, care. Yeah, where like in this, it, it's actually kind of cool that you go and talk to James or, or whoever and, and they actually make comments of your decisions. Mm -hmm. So you actually feel like you affected the world. Yes. You did something that, to be honest with you, actually would have affected the world. Number four. four. It's the fourth one. Four. So the next one is the story of the game. Now, I know that there are problems with this story, and I think we'll talk about that in a follow-up video eventually, but... Overall, I think the story of the game was well done. It's not the most emotionally powerful thing ever that's going to, you know, bring you to tears. But I thought that it tied the world and the story together pretty well, although it's a little short. And it also got you actually exploring the wasteland. So it kind of got you pointed in the right direction of looking around. Things like little lamplight and certain vaults and even your encounters with the Enclave. I think that with this too, you mentioned the factions before. And the factions in Fallout 3, they're not the best in the series, but I thought they were done really well. And actually, it is my favorite portrayal of the Brotherhood of Steel in the series, even though they're not the typical Brotherhood, because I thought they were actually likable and interesting with everything going around with Elder Lions and the Lion's Pride and different groups and the struggle with the Enclave. Yeah, one thing I really liked about the story was, well, first of all, I like to say the water purification like aspect about the story 
I thought was actually a really interesting spin on a Fallout story. A lot of the Fallout stories, in my opinion, are they're not bad, so I'm not saying I hate them or anything like that. It's just, there are stories where it's kind of like, oh yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. But to me, the, fall, the Fallout 3 water purification aspect, I actually thought was really cool. Like, it actually was really interesting and like, oh, we're actually trying to save this world. Mm -hmm. by literally straight up purifying the water because yeah the water would be contaminated after a nuke went off i also love liberty prime that was one of the funnest fallout missions of all time i thought the well, story overall was just very good i thought speaking of that broken steel which i know is dlc they actually were smart to continue the story yeah you know yeah. so it's, it's not just that the story ends it's that there's more story with the brotherhood in the enclave and then that ties in as well to everything going on with james where Everything around Revelation 21, 6 of purifying that water and giving unto the the people freely the waters of mm -hmm. life. I mean, this was pretty much a stepping stone towards Fallout 4. Now, I know that this is not Boston, but it's sort of the idea of, oh, we can actually, through hard work, sort of rejuvenate part of this land. Yeah. And I thought that that was an interesting way to look at it. I also think that when it comes to the story, though, you can't fully talk about it without talking about the world and how interactive and interesting it is, so that's kind of the next one we're going to move into. Number, number three. three! Number three! Number three! Number three! Number three! So I think this world is a really interesting setting, and actually it's one of the most bleak, despite the whole restorative aspect of trying to get the water up. This world is just absolutely ruined mm -hmm. this is an extremely isolated game in terms of how you feel yeah you encounter a lot of npcs but a lot of them want you dead a lot of them don't care about you uh, it's very much an every person for themselves world which is very different actually than something like fallout new vegas where it seemed a lot more settled and there was more structure or even fallout 4 where even though there wasn't a ton of structure there were so many settlements and a lot of them traded between each other so that both of those worlds were pretty intact compared to Fallout 3. Fallout 3 has to be the most nuclear devastated destroyed setting that I can think of in a video game. And I know games like Metro, they come a little close in terms of just a post-apocalyptic hellscape. But with Fallout, it was a very interesting setting because you're pretty much dropping people into a first person shooter VATS game, very different than the previous games. And you're going even further down the route of, like, everything's dead, good luck. And I thought the world itself, it makes sense why it was so destroyed, because it's literally the capital of the United States. Like, that would be target number one for enemies. Right. But, yeah, it was really interesting. I mean, I have my problems with the world, personally, and we can get into those in a different video. But the idea of just playing in Washington, D.C., I think is one of the most interesting ideas that Fallout could ever introduce. Like, if you think of any city in the United States of America, probably the most important city in the United States is Washington, D.C. Everyone in California just picked up pitchforks. I know. They're, California they're is the like, only thing that matters. <laughs> I know. That's the elitist attitude of California. But anyways, um, <laughs> I think D.C. is probably the most important city there is in the United States of America. So it makes sense why you would have a Fallout game set in D.C. Right. And it's just really cool to be able to go there and see the capital and see the White House, so what's left of it, see uh, all these different things in Washington, D.C. It's 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 really cool. It's really interesting. And there's quests around there's the history, quests, too. Yeah. Like the Declaration of Independence, I believe, kind mm -hmm. of, you know, retrieving that, or working for Abraham Washington, Lincoln's repeater, and actually, even, you know, with the world, I felt like in this game, there's a lot of really cool stuff you come across in terms of settlements. I love Fallout 4, and the, the point of this video isn't to say, like, Fallout 4 sucks, so that's right. not what I'm doing. But with this game and New Vegas, I felt very much like, oh, the next thing around the corner is going to be interesting and tie into the world. With Fallout 4 and 76, a lot of what you end up finding is things like bases for super mutants. Yeah. Or like, you know, little mini dungeons. It's a little more Skyrim-y, mm -hmm. where you're coming across more enemy strongholds than I think you are across things that really tie into and affect the world. Despite me loving, you know, those games still. I still really even enjoy 76, but I don't think it has the same impact of world design that this game had. You know, coming across something like Tenpenny Tower, I know I've mentioned it before, mm -hmm. or Megaton, or Arafu, or even uh, Tranquility Lane. I think yeah. those were all pretty powerful cool. moments, you know? 
And I don't really, uh, Fallout New Vegas has kind of the same powerful moments, just different. And I think that this game, I don't understand why they moved away from this actually. You know, where like it felt like the world was very tied together and there were secrets everywhere. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel quite as much that way in 4 to me out of the stuff you find where it's like a lot of secrets that tie together and hold the world together or even things like when you go to minefield and there's just a random sniper there and then you can read his journal and see you know kind of what's going on with him mm -hmm. there was a lot of little things where it seems like there's characters established in the world already and they just think you're some asshole who comes along and like you know <laughs> It disrupts their life, right? Right. In Fallout 4, it kind of felt like everybody yielded to you as if you were the main character. Right. I didn't feel that way in Fallout 3. It kind of felt like a lot of characters were like, you're just some jerk. Like, I, I don't need to deal with you. It felt like you against everyone else. Yeah, it like, really did. Like you were you were one of the members of that world, and everyone's trying to fend for themselves. Yeah, whereas in, like, I think Fallout 4, and especially 76, mo a lot of people you come across when you do come across people are like, oh... You're the savior of a, of us. Right. Whoa! You know what I mean? Yeah. This was a little more Last of Us, where mm -hmm. you're kind of playing, and you're like, who's actually right here? I mean, I came into this area, and I'm killing these people, mm -hmm. but did they really deserve that or not? Or even, like, the Paradise Falls. Is the best way to solve this actually just murdering everyone? Would there have been a better way to deal with this? Well, this is the way I have. You know, there's a lot of decisions and things you do that tie into that bleak world that I think really set this game apart. Number, Number two, two, the numero dos. dos. The fourth thing we wanted to talk about was actually player-owned housing. Now, if you're comparing this one, Fallout New Vegas 4 and 76, to be honest with you, this is probably the worst in terms of player-owned housing and stuff you can do in the houses and things like that. But one thing that we really liked about it was that it upgraded from Fallout 1 and 2 a lot. Yeah. Actually. So in this one, there's only really two houses you can really have in Fallout 3. Um, and depending on what your actions are, I mean, you only get one. But yeah. depending on what your actions are, you get to pick which one you want. And then there's some more stuff with the DLC. Yeah, like with the DLC. Like, for example, yeah. Mothership Zeta and stuff. Right. But the base game, it really only had those two houses. But that's more than zero. Yeah, The previous exactly. games didn't have player-owned housing. They right. just had, you could wipe out people in a building, and then if you wanted to for role-playing or whatever you want to do because you're playing the game, you could kind of set up shop there. Mm -hmm. But that didn't really do anything for you. No. This, this game actually does. Yeah. In this game, they actually give you like a bed. They give you tables and uh, drawers and everything like that you can store your items in. You can even rearrange items in your house which I thought was actually really interesting. Obviously, New Vegas and 4 and 76 did it better, but this game introduced all that, and it was really cool. Mm -hmm. Now, in this game, I think, it, in New Vegas, it was insanely glitchy. Yeah. Like, it was just impossible to move stuff around, and you always have, like, the problem of it phasing through the ground or something like that, Oh, you, which was really annoying. When you look at PC for this game, yeah. and I don't always try and be like, PC better, but when you look at PC for the Bethesda games, you can really see how much more could have been done. Yeah. Because people have just straight up built you entire player-owned houses in yes. the PC version that you can put with your stuff on weapon racks and mm -hmm. everything, kind of like Skyrim. This idea, though, for... The Bethesda games to actually implement player-owned housing, I think, is what we're talking about, though. You know, it's like, yeah. like you said, it's not the best. And yeah, sure, Oblivion did it, too. I get it. But I think that it does add to the world of Fallout. And, you know, that's kind of... It was the stepping stone for modders mm -hmm. to come in and make it better. And then it was the stepping stone for New Vegas to come in and make it better. And then Fallout 4 to have settlement building. And then 76 to have microtransaction settlement <laughs> building, which is frustrating. Um... This is something that I think the idea of it being implemented here adds to the world a lot. Because let's be honest, you would not survive this world just wandering around forever. No. Like, you need somewhere you need consistent. And, well, it also gave you something to call your own. Yes. Which I know sounds kind of stupid, but, like, when you're wandering around the wilderness, yeah, you're picking up a lot of items, you're picking up a lot of stuff, you're whatever. And it was just nice to be able to come back to a place that was yours and save the stuff you wanted, whether you wanted to put a bunch of your clothes in a drawer or something like that, or if you wanted to display like the Lincoln's repeater, you know, you, let's say you want to put that on your desk. It was cool to take that and be able to come back to a place and actually display it on your desk. 
instead of just having it sit in your pocket or you know sitting in some dumb chest or something like that and you never get to see it number, number one splat I think one of the biggest things that Fallout 3 did really well was its implementation of VATS. VATS in this game, and again New Vegas, probably my favorite in the series. I like it more actually than Fallout 1 and 2, which was very much just, you know, you pull up the thing. Level. Yeah, you pull up the thing, you click on it, it would have a little percentage and that'd be it. Um, with Fallout 3 and New Vegas, it is the same but because you're looking at it from a first person perspective and you're actually seeing where they're at and you're seeing things going on, like for example, if someone's throwing a grenade, you could target the grenade in the air or you could target it on their belt, mm -hmm. uh, things like that, I thought really added to VATS and stopping time, which the previous games did, but later games for some reason don't do, which I, again, don't understand why you'd move away from this. It's fine in Fallout 4, but in 76, it's pretty bad. VATS kind of sucks. With this game, though, I thought VATS was something that really sets the gameplay apart. The shooting in this game is not the best. It never will be, and it, it never was. But it actually stood apart from other shooters and other RPG open-world games because of VATS. It was such a unique combat system that I don't really see many games do. And there have been games like XCOM that do similar things, um, especially on PC, but Fallout was one of the first ones, I think, to make this sort of combat really popular and mainstream. Yeah, the VAT system really revolutionized the combat, and, and I thought it was pretty cool. In Fallout 76, the reason why it was so bad is because if me and you were, like, facing each other online or something, I wouldn't be able to pause your game. So, like, they randomly just had everyone move in, like, real time, mm -hmm. which defeats the purpose of VATS. Yeah. Like, the purpose of VATS is, like, being able to specifically choose and map out your route and target what you want to target, and you can't really do that if you have, like, a death claw charging at you in real time. But it sort of mixes Final Fantasy turn-based style combat in with a shooter, and that sounds like it wouldn't work, but it works really well. It does. It really does. And I found myself mainly using VATS for combat in this game. Yeah, in Fallout 3 and, and New Vegas, I definitely did. So, you know, when you use it, it actually just gives you time to think. Mm -hmm. And it gives you time to breathe. It gives you time to just assess the situation. It gives you time to actually move around and see all the enemies that are in the area so you know how many you even have. You know, if I drop into, like, a big crew of uh, Caesar's Legion, I know that's from New Vegas, but Caesar's Legion crew, and let's say there's like 20 of them around, in something like 76 and Fallout 4, it's very overwhelming. Yeah. Because you drop in, it's like, okay, there's everyone everywhere and I can't do anything. Right. In 3 in New Vegas, you actually get to stop time and you get to look around and see, oh, okay, well, there's 20 people here. And I'm not trying to be hard on 4. I'm just saying that I think improving the gun mechanics, which is something we'll talk about, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. Because you improve the gun mechanics, and it certainly does make the FPS aspect more fun. Mm -hmm. But it also did take away a little bit from the role-playing aspect of, oh, I need VATS. And one of the reasons one of the reasons you have VATS and that you are more powerful than a lot of people out there is the Pip-Boy. Yes. That's what it ties into. And actually, when you look at it, there are characters in Fallout who really want your Pip-Boy mm -hmm. in Fallout 3 and New Vegas. And they're like, oh, Pip-Boy, I'm going to take that when I kill you. You know, like, that's a big deal. They actually even reference that sometimes. And then in things like 4 and 76, because everybody is, you know, pretty much uh, John Wayne of the Wild Wild West, <laughs> like Gunslinger, who's like the best shooter ever, it makes that element, I think, of the Pip-Boy mattering and of Vats mattering go down. But it also adds to fun with shooting. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm just saying it's a mixed bag. Uh, 76, there's not a lot of excuses for. No. That one doesn't really, bad. that doesn't get a pass from me on Vats no. at all. <laughs> Anyways, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Did you enjoy this video? Did you not? Be sure to target that subscribe button and <laughs> hit it with 100% accuracy in real-time Vats. And, of course, as well, target the like button and hit that as well. And, of course, if you have any AP left over, be sure to go down there and check out all the links in the description description down below we have a secondary channel degenerate plays where we play through a ton of video games together my wife jill and my friend t are also over on that channel and of course speaking of my beautiful wonderful wife jill she also does have her own very great awesome store where she sells all kinds of awesome resin pieces from repurposed recycled comic books as well as very very cool very super special awesome jewelry which i hope you'll check out 
in the links down below. Have a fantastic day, and as always, everyone, stay shway.